And we're live. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Bob? Great to see you, Billy. Yes, you too. I already know you so well. Well, I feel the same about you, uh, you know, through your TikToks and everything. And um, I, I feel that uh, every TikTok I've ever watched of yours is like a, a reflection of my own soul. That's beautiful, man. Thank you, my brother. I um I've been blown away by yours too. I I um you put it you put it nice, man. It's very clear that you you it's not just book learning. You know, you've read the books, but you've really experienced a lot of the non-dual consciousness you know, or it's hard to even talk about it in like a quantifiable way, like a lot of or whatever, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. clear that you've tasted the waters, my brother. Yes, same same for you. Um, yeah, I had my experience first and then trying to figure out what the hell that was that <laughs> nobody else was talking about. I started researching and I started with psychology and I got so far into psychology and thought, I don't think this is quite it. It's mm. it's it's like a couple doorways into it, but then it just yeah. stopped. Yeah. And then maybe even same with philosophy. I got into philosophy, you know, like Socrates and 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 he's great. And Socrates is epic. Um, but it could have been, you know because I was taking some college courses and it could have just been the way these courses are guided. It just kind of brought me more into my mind. And I was yeah. like, no, the experience, the experience that I had was not of me. It was not of my mind. And so I would say that my mm. search for that thing, it's kind of weird because it's like, it's beyond your mind, but your mind wants to understand it. Mm. And, and it's just gonna run around in circles because it can't conceptualize it that's it yes and i feel like my search came to a screeching halt when i found ramana maharshi yeah yeah well yeah well let me let me say this actually uh it kind of came to a halt with many others before like I studied mm. uh, 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 Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, Suzuki. Yep. And, and there's I some knew... non-dual in Suzuki too. Yes. Um, and even some Thomas Merton. Mm -hmm. uh, but something, there was something about Ramana that just. Yeah, he's the, he's the goat. I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this yeah. is funny. Look at that. So I haven't changed this in like, I don't know eight years look at this can you see my screen yes this has been my this has been my about oh wow on facebook for a long time <laughs> yes i let love what that. comes love come that. let what goes go find out what remains yeah man yeah i just had to show you that yeah yeah Deep that's uh, and of course so yeah i'm 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 looking forward to your book for sure um, and I've, you know, seen glimpses of it and I, which congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, I hope it helps people. Damn it. I'm sure, I'm sure I it think will. It might. I, I think it might because, you know, whether it's sometimes what people say to me is thank you for introducing me to Ramana or, uh, <laughs> You know, it's a beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, so whatever it is, it's just making this, you know, connection. And, you know, sometimes uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like whatever it is I'm doing, it's helping someone on a personal level. Sometimes it, it pushes someone off in, into another space that opens up within them. Yeah. And it all just basically comes back to, 
this awareness, this nothingness, this, again, what can you say about it? The ineffable. Yeah. <laughs> you define it by its uh, inability to be defined, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I'm happy to, um, if all we are is commercials for Sri Ramana Maharshi, then that is a deep honor. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and yeah, and I kind of, I think, I think of myself in that way, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I I'm certainly not at, at anywhere near guru level and, you know, happy to be the philosopher kind of billboard and, you know, you know, the finger pointing to the moon, so to speak. And, um, and, you know, yeah, I, I, I've, I've described kind of myself and my work in that way in terms of like, I'm just parroting Yogananda, Vivekananda, Sri Ramana, uh, some Buddha, um, you know, some mystic reads of Jesus. That's really all I'm doing. Now, of course, I'm, I'm giving the now 2022 take and we're on tiktok and you know right. form is um pretty inconsequential uh yeah. it's the content you know it's the uh, uh that's the dichotomy and of course miracles form versus content it's not the it's not the material uh holder it's just right. what's the juice baby so that's um, it so yeah so happy to 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 help that manifest in whatever capacity yeah, it's uh, sometimes what I do reminds me of this group of, of people throughout history called Fools for Christ. Mm. Don't know if you've ever so looked at that. Yeah, and, and basically um, it would be these uh, like monk like Christians who didn't own Bibles, didn't know the Bible, but they just would they would have the jesus prayer or something and that's all they would do and of course that mantra would eventually take them deep into their own christ consciousness sure but what they would do is they would go out to the streets and act a fool and pretend to be drunk and and all kinds of comedy and so i've been this way my whole life <laughs> um as much as i love people like um uh, jiddu krishnamurti uh, I, I, I could never, he's a little, be, he's a little steely. He is, he is, he is. I could never be like that. I can never, yeah, I, I'm so, uh, playful. I'm so Even like, Nisargadatta, to be honest, you know, Nisargadatta has got some sass, which yeah. I love, but it's not me either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you could, you could read this dialogue between him and someone and, and, and eventually it comes down to. Well, then go somewhere else then, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you don't like my answer, you're, wasting, <laughs> you're, you're wasting. Exactly. Uh, That's great. Yeah, I like that. I'll have to look up the Fools for Christ. Is that, you know, I yeah, I sometimes I describe myself as more of like SpongeBob. Yeah. You know, I mean, and like sometimes people aren't ready for it, you know, and it's just like, look, my wall's down. My heart's yeah. beating. I'm going to be really kind to you. And there's people like I, I'm in Austin, Texas, and there's like I, ha I have a lot of musician friends, for example, and like they're creative. I've made films That's my background, made film and religion. And um, so kind of all my buddies were in music. I would like make their music videos and use, use their music for my films and uh, secretly or not. But um, going, to, going to these shows, I went to one of these shows recently and it was like kind of as I've been deepening the work, so to speak. And since I'd seen a few of those guys, it'd been a few years and I was like, oh, like I had this realization kind of there and after the fact that um, there's a lot of concern about perception <laughs> in this circle, you know, it's the cool kids. It's like, this is all people that are like trying to be cool. They're concerned how they look, how they look. And so like the energy I'm bringing to the, exchange it doesn't match all the time right <laughs> and that's okay yeah. you know it doesn't have to but i was kind of like i got some resistance and i was like oh it's because i'm just like going full spongebob to the <laughs> to the cool kids you know and so anyway um not that 
we're not cool because we are damn it but um but you know what i mean of like yeah everything is just perfectly arranged and so on and it's just like you know the ego just manifests in all these different capacities and it's a part of us too but um but yeah i uh i i also wanted to mention i i think i might have commented this to you but um there's a really beautiful book called a course in miracles yes i've heard of it okay cool so um so a course is probably the best um western non-dual teaching Mm -hmm. um and I have a short section in my book, it might be a fuller book in the future, probably will, um, making comparisons between Advaita and A Course. Um, you know, Advaita, to, in my view, is is kind of the premier ideology um, alongside of the idea that all paths are true, you know, right. and everybody can get there in any way. So I'm not, not in an exclusive way, but in a pure, purity way or a purification yeah. way. And so ACIM, sometimes as it's called, um, it's, it's even called, been called the Christian Vedanta. It uses Christian terminology, um, but it's very non-dual and it's very sophisticated. Um, it's basically, you know, it's yana yoga. It's basically yana yoga. It's not that far off yeah. um, from a lot of the things that, that Ramana and Nisargadatta talk about. So anyway, when you said psychology and, you know, your experience, I was curious if you, had made any stumblings there, but, um, but it's, but it's quite good. I'm happy to endorse it. And I do in the book as you'll, as you'll see. Yeah. I, uh, many people, like if they come onto my live or something, they say, Oh, you must've studied course in miracles. And I said, Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of things, you know, we could jokingly say, you know, all past lead to, uh, you know, Advaita Vedanta. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, you know, but um, so when I was eight, pure non-dual. Yeah, it's yeah, just pure non-dual. When I was eight years old, I don't know. You may you might have heard this story before. Um, it's when I had my first spiritual awakening, mm. and we lived in Alaska at a place called Fort Greeley. It was like population five hundred, middle of nowhere near Fairbanks, Alaska. It was summertime. And the weather was probably about like it is right now today here in Kentucky. It's, it's like maybe 75, 80 degrees. It was a real nice day. And there was these woods right like a football field from our house. And my dad would say, do not go into those woods because those woods go from here all the way across Canada. You're, you know, 5,000 miles of lost. But I was wow. always... And I would always play at the edge of these That's woods. Very and, mythological setting, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and so one day at the edge of these woods, I kind of looked around and snuck off into the woods. And I was walking down this path. It was like a little trail. And the only way that I've ever been able to explain it is I just disappeared. Not that. If someone was watching, they would see my body disappear. The body was there, but but it's it's like my consciousness expanded, and I just felt like I was the universe. Not and and I was never exposed to any ideas. It's not like this was something I had watched a movie about. Um, this would have been 1979, 1980, somewhere right there. Mm-hmm. I had not watched movies or books. Um, my parents were somewhat religious me and my sister would go to bible school but still there was nothing this is why i always say it was uncaused um that's beautiful and i'm just it was like a samadhi baby (laughs) i would uh, a very specific state of samadhi i want to say maybe 10 or 15 minutes even though there was no track of time in that and the biggest thing that i always remember was a bird was singing, but it sounded like the bird was coming from my heart space. So it was like, mm. and, and this happened. I was not on drugs. I was not diagnosed with a mental disorder. I, I none of this. So I- anything that somebody would arise and say, 
oh, maybe you were hallucinating. No, it was it was the complete absence of the thinking mind and the expansion of the consciousness. And then I heard my dad calling me. And I I I can I just felt this just like almost like cloak come back on like mm, yeah like shrinking. Oh, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I I uh I'm Billy and I'm not supposed to be in the woods, you know, kind of thing. Wow. When I went home, I tried to tell my parents, like, you won't believe what happened. I got in trouble. <laughs> I was making up stuff, but because I was sticking to my story, I got in more trouble until I learned to keep my mouth shut. And mm. that was that. And, and then, I, of course, I got into drugs and alcohol as a teenager and tried to, we're all trying to escape something, but it's all like, it's all right here. Right. Yes. Here, here. Beautiful. No, that's amazing. And I, you know, I really honor the kind of organic mystics, if I may, um, yeah. not labeling you necessarily, but that's what you had, right? You had a natural awakening experience. And, you know, there's a few of you guys, um, you know, Sri Ramana is probably the most famous of having the death experience um, in his uncle's attic. Yeah. After his father passes away. And that's what that's what set him off. And he did, he never came down after that. Um, you know, at Cartoli. Um, my a huge influence to me too in the last few years is Byron Katie. Mm. I, you know I, her? She's terrific. I've seen one video, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm she's the queen. Um, she's very, very high up there. And alive and well thankfully um but she had a similar experience didn't know anything about nothing from like a religious scholarship or whatever you know standpoint she was like a depressed real estate agent in california basically bad mom you know yeah um and and you know woke up to realize that every story is a creation uh, I mean, it's such a profound thing. And so, you know, people do have these awakening moments. And um, and that's not really my experience. I've had some profound meditations. I've had some profound uh, psychedelic experiences. and um, But it's been considerably more incremental for me. It's been much more of an incremental increase in sustained peace, sustained awareness. Yeah. And, um, and and I'm also incredibly unmindful oftentimes and multiple times a day. And, you know, and it's almost like noticing the unnoticing or something, you know, it's like, oh, I I can see how unaware I was and am <laughs> is a crucial step in the process. But, um, but yeah, that's really, really cool. Uh, there's another guy, too. I don't know if you've seen his stuff, but his name's Awaken with Waz uh, on TikTok. His name's Warren. Warren, we just call him Waz. He's a British dude. He has a British accent. He lived in Australia. He's in California now, I think. But he's doing Christ consciousness stuff. And I've connected with him. And he's had um, some very visual mystical experiences, um, yeah. which are really cool. So anyway, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I think I'm kind of more on the philosopher. Uh, what I'm really trying to do, and this is kind of, really what the book is i'm trying to walk the line between religious scholarship and pop spirituality yeah because in my view a lot the pop spirituality stuff is great for a lot of people it's typically too thin for me yeah and and kind of lacks some rigor and the religious textbook world is too dry for for, for everyone else and a lot of it is too dry for me so how can i I'm trying to walk that line, baby. At least original sin is a lie. It's trying to walk that line between the two worlds, make comparative religion and spirituality scholarship relevant <laughs> and accessible. Yeah. So wish me luck. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. Because but uh, one thing that I have uh, become aware of since I've been on TikTok is that ultimately, whether we have some knowledge or some experience or both, and we're trying to share that. As I always say, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. 
And um, but if 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 there is a question, yes. then then there becomes even then I'm not saying this path is wrong or this is wrong. I, I'm not trying to bring somebody over into yana yoga or anything. It's uh I have plenty of people that I've talked to in the past 10 years uh since I've been doing this that are Christian and I help guide them in their Christian faith. Um and uh it's 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 been amazing. So beautiful. What I have fe- felt is that like your book or my book or our our TikToks and videos and they're like little bridges that help someone you know and of course in Buddhism they talk about you know the raft and things like that it's like it's like it's just sending someone a little raft or a bridge or something and um you know what you just said about your book you know somewhere between you know pop spirituality and and scholarship it's like that that's going to be a good bridge that's that's a really good broad bridge for people to walk across and maybe it maybe that's it maybe your book becomes it for them or maybe they move on to ramana or or yeah they read a ramana quote in there and they go who is this guy let me look him up you know yeah 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 which i'm all game for you know to your point yeah how many yeah. how many people can i cite that was that was kind of a fun thing you know yeah I, the original subtitle actually was called it was original sin is a lie and other truths from the spiritual buffet line yeah which you know you get and i loved but people too many people were like what what are you talking about it's like and i was like oh, spiritual buffet line it's funny it's like perennial philosophy like all the religions have flavors and different dishes to try and you know and but yeah. kind of nobody really knew what the hell I was talking about so it, it, I changed it to be a little more clear but but yeah that's um it's a fun role to play for me is to say hey look at all this great stuff if you're into oh you're really into presence and not overthinking well then check out zen buddhism you know yeah. oh you're really into uh, poetry and music and opening up your heart oh you got to read the sufis uh, you know it's kind of it's fun to play that kind of matchmaker role if you will <laughs> yeah i feel you deep and I in your are, own practice yeah yeah I, I feel you and i are very similar in that because i um so once i started in 2000 i had another spiritual awakening that brought me back to my eight-year-old state and mm. Um, that came from a book called Reflections of the Christ Mind mm. by Paul Farini. I don't think the book ever like took off or anything, but it was, uh, I bought it when it came out new in the year 2000. And, but when I, when I started doing my, my research and reading and taking some classes at college and realized this is what happened to me at eight years old. Uh, and of course, I started studying yoga and ancient yoga and, and all that. Um, but once I made that connection, then I wanted to read like every text I could to see, are they really revealing truth here or is this something else? And of course, I, I studied Taoism. I love Taoism. Yeah. It's a way of explaining. Um, uh, so like you said, whenever I talk to someone, it's almost as if within a second all of this experience and all of this research i've done over the years i could easily say oh you 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 want some tick not haunt tick not haunt is so light but yet mm-hmm. deep. yeah or, he has all everything you need you know yeah. yeah he's like the most accessible and he's also the deep root as deepest root ever you know yeah beautiful yeah um and you you mentioned yoga nun um, yeah. Well, not to be too. Uh, can you see him? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a few guys around, but it's kind of appropriate that he's behind me. It's kind of funny. I didn't plan for him to be blocked <laughs> by me, but I, so I take corporate calls all day. We work at a corporation, which is another thing we could talk about. I don't really talk about it on TikTok, but I I will. But um, basically, I over Christmas I put up. Or the gurus in here and uh 
And uh, it's kind of funny because then I'll like turn and people are like, oh, whoa, there's like an Indian man behind you. <laughs> it's like, oh, my, my little, he's kind of watching over me. But anyway, um, yeah, Yogananda was, uh, did, have you ever read Autobiography? Of yeah. Yogi? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's another guy who had a million experiences as a kid and met all those famous saints and holy men and women. And he was so good. And I think what drew me to the Hindus too, and, and I'm sure like yourself about how, um, how the new, they talk about the nuance really well. Yogananda talks about the nuance. Vivekananda talks about the nuance. Like there's so many misconceptions around religion and spirituality and like religiosity, you know, like, um, you know, Yogananda, um, for example, he's he's uh, going to the Himalayas as a little boy and, or a young man, and he uh, stops through a temple, um, but God is formless, you see, so I don't need to bow at this temple. I'm just going to keep going on my way. Um, and then when he finally runs into the saint after taking days and days, and he gets pointed the wrong direction, and uh, and when he when he asks the saint, you know, what led to his difficulty or i don't even think he he brings it up but the saint says where do you find god or something and he's like what why how is this guy asking this and he says um you know god is transcendental but he's also everywhere and uh and you know everything and nothing and the the guru says yes that's true he, he does transcend but he's also imminent and so when you didn't bow to him in the temple you created a karmic delay in meeting me um, you know and it's like he's you know you're, he's just correcting all the he's myth busting basically he's just myth, myth busting so yeah i love the hindus can just articulate all the nuance so well and contextualize so well and they're so damn open um to everybody and and yeah uh, and and you know and that's what why i left the christian world is because which which i wasn't really i i kind of brand myself as like ex-christian i think my bio says ex-christian um but i wasn't really i was baptized but we were easter christmas christians yeah um and so i liked going you know that's kind of my joke is like i went twice a year i liked going because it was like oh we'll sing some songs and <laughs> we'll get dressed up and people are emotional on Easter and Christmas and it's kind of powerful. And, um, but you know, yeah, when I was in my teens, as soon as, as, as soon as it was, this is the only way, um, it was just like, well, why are there all these other ways? Uh, you know, there's so much wisdom. Right. And then, and then Thich Nhat Hanh wrote Living Buddha, Living Christ, which I read as a fairly young person. Um, and there was no going back for me, but, but yeah, I mean, Yogananda, oh, Jesus, avatar, you know, oh, Buddha, avatar, you know, it's like honoring the, all the past is the way to go for me. Yeah. 100%. Um, my, my first, my first and only in-person teacher slash guru I've ever had in my life was I was, um, it would have been about 1992 and I was living at a roadside hotel as a drunk, uh, delivering pizza at night. And um, the owner of the hotel, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Patel, who were from India, born and raised in India, moved to England when they were young and then eventually moved here and bought this hotel. And they were running this hotel called the Colonial Motel. And she saw something in me. And she, um, they were very much, um, I don't know what the word is, like how people might be in New York City. Like you just don't talk to people. Everything's just, you know, business. And they mm -hmm. were always, until one day uh, she knocked on my hotel door, probably woke me up. I opened the door. She just gave me this look. You come with me. I said, what? What's going on? You know? She brought me into her house, which was kind of weird because no one ever went into the, it was attached to the hotel. No one ever went in there. And I went in there and the smell of, you know, Indian food and, and pictures of Ganesha on the wall. It was just fascinating. Mm -hmm. And she says, um, why are you on drugs? <laughs> I said, I said, I'm not on drugs. She said, why are you on drugs? <laughs> That began this process of her sharing 
Hinduism, not as can you convert to Hinduism? Because she would always tell me, okay, you grew up Christian. Is this what Jesus said? You know, and she would open these doors up. And um, Mrs. It, Patel. Miss Patel, she Deep was, out. yeah, it was epic. And she would tell people, she, she, she uh, died a couple of years ago. And, but she would always tell people, because she had three daughters with Victor, her husband. She says, I always tell everyone, I have three daughters and one son. And the son being me. And uh, it was uh, the relationship and the bond that I had with her and Victor was just powerful. And it wasn't so much talking about philosophy as much as just energetically opening doors. Sure. And then when I would discover something, I would, I would bring it to her. Hey, I just read this, da, 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 you know? Um, so, and then, you know, um, something within me just opened up so wide in two, in the year 2000, when I had my, what I call my second awakening that I, I was sharing things with her <laughs> um, whenever I would go and see her. Um, but yes, it, the, the, the Indian, especially, you know, in, in Ramana's time, the 1800s, 1900s. Such uh, a rich period of, yeah, really high beings. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The whole lineage of Yogananda, um, so interestingly enough, when I went and studied yoga to teach yoga in Nashville in 2011, it is the lineage of Bikram yoga, which... Yes, because he studied under yoga, not his brother. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and of course, you know, we all, you know, know about Bikram and everything. And um, I always say there's there's such a goodness in, in Bikram Chowdhury, but there was also this side to him that was bound to catch up with him but if we set that aside um that whole Vishnu Ghosh was his uh was Yogananda's brother yeah um and such like you said such a richness of authenticity down to earth um I believe if Yogananda was here with you and I right now he would be just talking with us like What's up, Bob? But I also feel that about Jesus as well. So, uh, and probably, not, yeah, yeah, probably not so much like, um, like, like, a, you know, how you might imagine a king walking into like a room. I don't think that's how we would meet Jesus or uh, Yogananda. So, yeah. Uh, good teacher. Um, he says, uh, and Mark uh, man says, good teacher. Asks him a question. He says, good teacher. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? wait, what? That's the earliest gospel. John is much later where he's very kingly. So you're, you're right on. Um, yeah, no, that's beautiful. I, um, deep bow to Yogananda and uh, the masters and yeah, and seeing Jesus on the Kriya um, altar. If you go into a Kriya yoga center, it's uh, uh, Krishna and Jesus or Krishna and Jesus Babaji are up at the top and yeah. then kind of the, the human more recent modern masters are on a lower uh, run, but you're going to go, is that a Jew from Nazareth up there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. it's um, one of the books uh, that I'm working on. Um, I, I have several that I'm working on. I just let them flow. I'm not much of a sit down and just write. Uh, but one of the books I'm working on uh, is called Saving Jesus Christ. Mm. And basically, it, it, it's just talking about how the very simple teachings of Jesus got twisted and are being used now as this like dogma and somebody, and there's plenty of people doing it. It wouldn't just be me, but someone needs to save Jesus from yeah. this, this lie. 
And I feel like that's also partly what your book is about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're kindred spirits, Billy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, um, you know, one, one thing, and I know you'll, you have, you have first person front row seats to this, um, especially in Kentucky and I'm in Texas. Um, the, the deconstruction movement um, has been so um, soulfully beautiful to me. Um, you know, it, I, I quote unquote deconstructed a long time ago, as did you, right? Um, I'm 34 and I told my mom I'm not Christian anymore when I was 18. Um, and she was like, what? I, I always thought Christianity was, was being Christian was a good thing. And I said, well, Jesus is great, but so is the Buddha, you know, basically. Um, so it's been a while since I let go of that term. And, but in the last, really since Trump was elected, um, is when kind of culturally, sociologically in America, Christians started to have an exodus, if you will, um, yeah. in terms of saying, wait, 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 I'm a good person. I care about my community. And they are. I'm not saying yeah. that they are. I'm a right. good person. I care about my community. I love my gay cousin. You know, I have a Muslim coworker, and he's hilarious. <laughs> and... I'm not with this. I don't identify with this guy and this, you know, I'm probably in party, I think in general, but um, that's what, that's what led to this. And so now there's so many Christians right now that are kind of going, they're either going hardcore atheist. Yeah. They're on TikTok. There's a lot of, you know, ex evangelical. It's a hashtag. Yeah. yeah they're I've on seen TikTok that. as atheists. And they don't like some of my stuff too. Cause I'm going, no, Jesus is cool. And I'm going, no, none of it's cool. Yeah. And I'm going, well, none of it's for you right now. And that's okay, yeah. my brother. Peace to you. <laughs> but 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 the other guys are saying, I like a lot of it, but I don't like the corruption, the hypocrisy. You know, this one guy just started following uh Cadizium. I don't know his full name, but um he said I would sit in church board meetings. He was in a church leadership role, some capacity. He said 90% of the conversations were about fundraising. Yeah. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know that, you know? I had a suspicion of that, but I didn't, I didn't go to, I wasn't in the meeting. You know what I mean? I didn't know. Yeah. This guy was there. He said 90% of what they talked about was how do we get more funds? And the great irony is that of all the subject matter, that Jesus talks about in the New Testament, the number one recurring motif is walking away from greed. Yeah. Detachment from material. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, there, there's, there's your book right there. You know, I mean, that's, that's the idea is these guys have just so, so twisted um, the teaching and, um, and yeah, I think it's, it's a joy to be able to point to the, the real thing and and if it's not even my, you know, I you said something like that earlier. Like I, I had a guy comment on these Facebook ads that are hilarious. They're even funnier than some of the TikTok comments. But this guy goes, "Well, if you don't believe the Epistle of Paul, then you'll have to believe the Epistle of Bob Peck." <laughs> 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 and I was like, "That's pretty funny." And um, you know, but but it's like. So I say like the true teaching, whatever. It's like, I don't really claim to be getting across the true teaching. But what I can tell you is here's the scholarship. Here's what the Hindus say. You know, here, here's what everybody that's really either dug into the material from an academic perspective or from a mystical perspective. Because I think that there's teachings that the scholars don't get because they don't have a mystic understanding and i think that there's some scholarship that the mystics could use sometime you know i think both both schools need each other you know absolutely and i feel like what really blew everything out of the water and some people to this day still deny it is that the, the whole finding at the nag nag hammadi or i mean that's it it's incredible yeah oh okay, so here's these these scripts that have been just sitting there for a couple thousand years not being translated and adjusted to every denomination. Yeah, Here check it them is. out. Yeah. 
And of course, I you know whatever it's written in, maybe it's Hebrew or something. Um, whatever it's written in, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I I first read <clears throat> what what's her name? Elaine P- Pagels. That's it. Yeah. Um, epic scholar and then of course you know reading gospel thomas and uh yeah. you know all of that and it sounds like sri ramana yeah it does absolutely and <laughs> my brother is a pentecostal pastor oh wow in fact he was an associate pastor for 20 years and just recently became the pastor of this um pretty good sized church. It's not a mega church or anything, but it's, you know, it's not a little small town church. They have a couple thousand, 4,000 people. And he's a good preacher and, and he has a good heart, but there's also a lot of things in there. Thanksgiving dinner, we, we don't need to talk about um, Jesus. <laughs> so, because I, I, if it's I the esoteric and the exoteric sitting yeah. next to each other. Yeah. The Turkey. That's funny. Yeah we talk about football so <laughs> um but he he is um like many people in small town america this is what i always said i said if jesus came back today in the flesh looking like you think he's supposed to look like you would still crucify him because he would say things you would crucify him again i said he would say things that go against what you believe absolutely he would say things that would go against yeah. what you believe yeah. Um, egolessness yeah yeah and so you, you mentioned paul whenever i started studying the bible again after my awakening in 2000 I, I felt really just like this good connection with jesus and always felt a little bit off with paul anything that paul wrote i was like paul's tricky yeah it yes that's a good word for it I just kept feeling like Paul has got like a taste of it, but is also yeah. saying, let's build an empire here. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's the COO, you know? Yeah. 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 He's, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned him because early on, first chapter, I think it's like second or third section. Um, I talk about his conversion experience and, you know, really original sin, Billy, the term comes from augustine and it's augustine reading paul and it's paul reading genesis and some of the sayings of jesus and so so it's augustine reading paul who's reading jesus and uh genesis and 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 uh, genesis comes from judaism they don't have original sin (laughs) you know so the texts that the whole thing's based off they don't have it um and and Paul never met, never met Jesus. You know, a lot of, I don't, if you went around with a man on the street thing in American churches and you said, did Paul know Jesus? Yes or no. I mean, that'd be an interesting experiment. Honestly, yeah. maybe I'll do this um, because I don't think it would be very high accuracy. Um, yeah. I feel like most people would say, yes, he, he Paul yes. was. Bible. He was in a pipe. He was an apostle and they call him the 13th. But he was a Pharisee, right? That 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 had the vision of Jesus on, on the road to Damascus. And basically the way I describe him is I say something like, you know, he ha- he has some gems. There are some nice things that he says. He says something like, um, there's not Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, for we're all one in Christ Jesus. And he says some some, some nice mystical yeah. things like that. But at the same time. He never met the guy. He, he's he's very in, involved in setting up the institution. That's basically what he's doing. He's traveling around the Greco-Roman world, writing letters to these congregations. Saying, yeah, this is what she, this is how the rules go, et cetera, et cetera. So he's yeah, no, you're right on. I mean, I think he's he has value in some ways, but um, but uh, particularly because like a guy literally today quoted Romans in my Facebook ads. Uh, about original sin is a lie about what Paul says about original sin. And it's like, that's great. But Paul's letter to Romans is is different (laughs) than the Nazarene. You know, yeah. So anyway, I think Billy, you and I could probably talk for about 19 hours. Um, Let's do it again. 
Um, keep me posted on your book. Um, and I, I do, I, I got to wrap up cause I got to go be with my baby boy. He's two and a half and he's, uh, throwing bows at his mama. And so I'm going to go run him around like a dog outside. Well, that sounds good, Bob. And I agree with you and I appreciate your scholarship and uh, I'm looking forward to your book and maybe the next time I'll get my microphone out and, uh, you know, uh, also I'll send you this video and I don't know. Yeah, I might that'd even- be great. If it's okay with you, I might post this on my YouTube channel and Would love uh, that. I can put your link to your book in the description and all that. Um, and I I'll need, even- so I have a confession to make. I need to get yours. There's a couple of guys that I've been waiting to buy. Uh, there's like two of two of others, including you, that I've been waiting to buy until my book came out. Because I didn't want to, because as soon as I read it, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, I should have put something like that in there. So I'm excited to get yours. I'm excited to hear about your next project and, and, and more work coming from you, my brother. Absolutely, man. I love you, Bob. Much love, Billy. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Talk soon. All right. Bye.